Hey guys, and welcome to our first live stream. Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm a full-time window tinner, instructor, and consultant, if this is your first time watching, just so you know. And uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about plotters. Um, let's see, when you're ready for them, the pros and cons about them, and if should you should use them or not. Uh, keep in mind, this is our first ever live chat, so um, I'm still working out kind of the kinks on this. Uh, making sure that the auto is, audio is set up and the uh, camera is set up just fine. Uh, let's see here. we got a couple guys joining in on us, and thanks again for joining, guys. Uh, just give me one moment here. I'm going to go ahead and share some of the... Oh, hey, Robert. Robert, hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, just give one minute here before so we can get started. I'm getting lined up on my computer as well. I'm monitoring on my computer, and I have a, a tablet here as well. So just give me a moment to get set up. Um, and while I'm doing this as well, go ahead and take some time and share this live stream with anyone that you might think is beneficial and might help them out. Um, and then that way we can get as many people in here as possible. All right. So give me just one second here. Looks like we got a few people in here so far. All right, and if you guys let me know during the, in the chat below, um, you know, how the audio sounds, how the, uh, how the connection is, if it starts getting out a little bit, just let me know. Sorry, just taking me a moment to get used to all this here. Just uh, sharing the live feed. If you guys aren't uh, a part of the community on Facebook at uh, Window Tending Business, uh, just check out the groups there. We have about 400 members so far, and we're growing almost every day. Um, so that's definitely a good thing. It definitely helps out. You guys can talk amongst each other within the community. And if you guys had any direct questions, I answer a lot of questions there too, just because sometimes the comments on the YouTube channel, I don't get every single day and I don't get direct connections with that every single day and right away connections. All right. Got that taken care of. Okay, um, now with the, uh, <clears throat> with the flow of the live stream today that we're going to be talking about, the main focus is going to be on plotters. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons about plotters and if and when, or if and when you should get a plotter um, and when you think you should be ready for them. Um, after that, we'll go ahead and open up to some Q&A as well if, uh, if, there's any if there's enough time and if anyone had any questions. Um, I'm shooting on a phone here and then monitoring it on a separate tablet. Here, so I'm trying to make sure I, I can uh, read the chats and read the questions as well. Thanks for the thumbs up, whoever that is. Uh, give me one second. It's going to look a little funny. Sorry about the audio. I just got to grab the phone, make sure I can get the chats up. All right, beautiful. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now I can see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just so you all know, just if you want to see my setup right here, just got some basic lighting. And got the goods here for you, trying to make make it good for y'all. All right. Sorry about the audio. That was probably pretty loud. Are we looking good? Okay. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, make sure you be interactive as well within these conversations. Uh, just because I want to do, I want to see how this goes and see if live streaming is going to be beneficial for you guys and if you guys like it. Um, for those of you that are doing, uh, that are checking out the rebroadcast as well. I plan on doing these live streams on Sundays, typically sometime in the middle of the afternoon, probably after noon, um, and I'm on the Eastern Standard Time, so, so probably noon or after, trying to get after the church crowd and after when people are typically not at work. Um, so check us every Sunday. We're going to be going ahead and doing these if everyone likes them. So uh, let me know below in the comments um, if you do like them. So, All right, so let's get going here. 
Oh, and lastly too, I do wanna go over uh, one thing within the chat and there's an option for super chat if you guys don't know what that is. Basically, you're able to post your comment to the very top and keep it up there. It's like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you guys feel comfortable. You don't have to do it, it's totally not an option, but I do wanna let you know that it is an option if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, it all just helps to support the, uh, the channel as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, some pros and cons about plotters. Let's start with the pros. One of the biggest thing about pros for me is efficiency. Um, a lot of what I do in regards to obviously winning, tinting windows and such is that you want to try to be as efficient as possible, whether it's your own shop or it's not and, and you're working for another shop. You want to keep costs low and that's definitely a, a major uh, factor within business. So efficiency is a really big thing. Um, you do waste a lot less film, in my opinion, when you do use a plotter versus not using a plotter. Um, next thing that I wrote down here, and I just have some notes. I don't have a script or anything like that. Uh, next thing is time saving. I feel that uh, that it's definitely time saving. Just for me personally, um, I typically take about an hour and a half to two hours to hand cut a vehicle, a standard four door vehicle. Um, but when you're using a plotter, that typically gets down to about an hour and 15 to an hour and a half, really just depending on the vehicle. So um, time efficiency is always good, obviously, because if you're doing cars faster, then that means you can do more cars within a day. And then at the end of the day, you can make more money. And that's the whole point of this business, enjoying what you're doing, but you also have to make a living at the end as well. And lastly, uh, money making. I, yeah, I kind of basically over, went over that already. Uh, do I use a plotter on every vehicle, Joey? Um, yes, yes, I do. Um, as much time as I can. Uh, the reason why I use a plotter on every vehicle is because it is time saving for me. Uh, I do like to do that because if I have to hand cut, it just takes a little bit more time. I'm, I'm like super OCD, so my hand cuts like have to be perfect. My edges have to be rounded out just right. And I really like uh, to make it as perfect as I can. So <laughs> having a plotter kind of helps me uh, get away from that. It's still perfect, it does it on its own, but it's just obviously a little bit more faster. Um, some cons about plotters. Uh, there's only a few cons in my opinion about plotters. Um, first con is the initial cost. If you're gonna buy brand new, uh, a plotter is gonna run you about probably $5,000 in the ballpark. Um, it really just depends. There's Jaguars, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, Roland. I use a Roland GX400 and uh, what plotter do you use? Uh, what plotter do you recommend? Um, I used a, uh, I use a Roland GX. Um, I particularly like the Roland. I, I think I used the Jaguar before at another shop that I used. It wasn't as user friendly. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Um, and I'm just going to go briefly here cause you know, like I said, this is kind of the first time I'm doing this. So I'm kind of getting used to it right now. I do see some, uh, some questions going down in here in the chat. I appreciate that. Yes. I'm just going to go run through all this right here just so we can get the meat and potatoes out for this video. Um, especially for the people that are watching the rebroadcast. And then, um, at the end, I'll go ahead and open up to Q and A's and you guys can just blast away and ask me every question you guys want. Okay. Um, so initial cost uh, about $5,000 for a plotter. Now you can go to some sites like tintdude.com or other networking sites on Facebook. Uh, to see if someone has a plotter available that they maybe someone got into the business and didn't really like it and uh, wants to get out of the business and wants to sell their plotter and that's another good way to get an affordable plotter um, and also the software once you get a plotter most of the time almost every time that I know of you need software for it whether it's precision cut or film design or a number of different other um, softwares out there there's going to be a monthly cost to that um, and um, the last con about plotters, in my opinion, is that it's not easily mobile. You can take a plotter mobile if you want, but you really need to be set up correctly for it. You need a, like a van or a vehicle big enough to fit it in, plus you need power source, you need your laptop or some sort of computer so you can connect the two. Um, so it's not impossible to use a plotter as a mobile setup, um, but it is, uh, it's not as easy. And if I do a plotter, uh, you can use a plotter for mobile if you're not bringing it with you, you just do the pre-cuts. 
you just got to be, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a risk at that point, just because you have to do perfect installs. If you mess up that film, you got to either bring film with you and, uh, and hand cut or, uh, or or bring extra extra uh, extra copies of the cut, but I mean that's just a waste of film right there. So you got to be really good and confident in your work if you're going to be doing mobile and using a plotter, because you have the chance of being able to uh, mess it up and end up having to hand cut the window anyways. Um, let's see here. Lastly, here it looks like we got about 15 people in here. Four thumbs up. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Who needs a plotter? Um, you can be, anyone can get a plotter. Uh, it's, you can be new or you can be experienced. In my opinion, uh, I would not start, especially if you're just breaking into the industry, I would not start with getting a plotter right away. Reason being is that I really believe deep down that everyone needs to know how to hand cut. I mean, it's just a fact. You have to do it. Uh, because these guys, they're not going anywhere, you know, unless obviously a catastrophic accident. But um, you'll always have your hands, so you can always hand cut no matter what. The plotters, uh, power could go out, the internet could go out, maybe your computer goes down, uh, maybe your blade gets worn out on it. There could be a number of different things where the plotter is just not going to work. Um, and I've had those instances. And if you start off with this business and you just straight jump to a plotter and something happens to the plotter, what do you do? You know, you're now you're losing money. It's stressful. It's it's definitely not fun at that point. Um, so in my opinion, I feel that you should be learning how to hand cut first and foremost. After which, uh, once you're ready and once you're set, you can go ahead and get a plotter down the line because you're going to need those essential tools um, for this industry. Whether you're going to be in here for a year, twenty years. Maybe you're doing weekend warrior stuff and just making extra money on the side, or maybe you want to make this your full time gig. Um, you're going to need th those skills. And let's see here. So in my opinion, you should start off hand cutting. Now, a typical for me, a typical uh, a typical job hand cutting is anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. It may be more, it may be less. It really just depends on the car. So if I'm working an eight hour a day on an hour and a half to two hours, that's uh, I, I've done the math already. It's five point three three cars um, to four cars a day, four to 5.33 cars a day. Um, and that's gonna be my max out. So another reason, another way to know if you're ready for a plotter is if I'm hand cutting and I've meet, reached my maximum, which means that I'm doing four to five cars a day and I still have people trying to get in and scheduled in, um, then at that point my workload has now exceeded my physical capabilities of being to work and, and being to tint with my hands. Now at that time, um, a plotter is a really great time to get uh, a getting a plotter is a really great time because it'll cut your your time down and boost your efficiency and it's 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 an investment that's gonna you're gonna yield a lot of return on at that point it's better to do eight cars seven to eight cars obviously better than do four to five cars so um, at that point I think you should be ready for a plotter as well let's see let's see let's see I think that's pretty much it for right now. I just wrote some light stuff here. Um, I just really wanted to get a live stream out. I kind of want to feel how it is. It was. It's been. I've been working on this live stream for probably about three weeks now, um, and it's really kind of nerve wracking because you're doing. You know, you're doing this live. Normally, when I shoot, I'll shoot my videos. Um, I'll retake a number of different times. If you guys see my videos recently, I've been doing like gag reels at the end, like blooper scenes essentially. So it does take me some time. So this is a little nerve wracking, um, but it's, I think it's gonna get, I'm gonna get used to it after a little bit of time. Um, and it's a really great way to interact with you guys, um, you know, almost in real time. How to search for a location to set my shop? Uh, Mohammed, I'm a little confused about that question. Uh, give me one moment here. Um, I think that's it right now for um, the plotter section of this video. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to Q&A. Um, so if you guys had any questions, concerns about plotters or maybe about your business, um, go ahead and throw them up now. Joey, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks. I hope everyone can hear me all right. I got a new, uh, a new shotgun mic uh, for my uh, setup, so hopefully the, the audio is a little bit better. And I got these two giant lights here as well, just so I can, uh, I can look a little bit better here. Um, so let me see here. All right, now at this time, guys, if you guys did have any questions or concerns, 
um, go ahead and throw them up to me and I'll be able to go ahead and do so here. Let's check and see. Live chat, here we go. Trying to pull these up right here, right now. Oh, there's throw card. Oh, awesome. Well, it looks like my computer just shut down. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let me see. I'm going to grab the phone one more time, so this might be a little bit loud for you guys. Sorry. How to search for a location to set my shop. Um, how to search for my location to set up a shop. I'm a little confused about that one. I'm not into a plotter. I work much on location. Okay, Tint Profi. Um, in regards to your question about plotters, um, you can work with a plotter on location. You can bring one with you. Uh, let's see here. I probably work much on location, so you can bring you can bring the pre-cut patterns with you. You don't have to, um, you don't have to bring the whole plotter with you. But what you do is, um, what you do is you just bring them some backup raw film, um, obviously uncut film in a box, and that way, if anything happens to the film when you're installing it or when you're working with it, and you have to start over, then you have the option to hand cut. Um, but if you're pretty confident in your abilities, then it shouldn't be a problem. It's really not that difficult um, to pre-cut and make sure you're just doing it right. All right, let's see here. Here we go. Um, let's see here. Robert. Yo, thanks for your videos. I've learned a good amount from them. I have about a month tinting. What tint do you recommend? Um, what tint do I recommend? Um, that's really up to you. I just recently did a video called The Truth About Window Tinting. Um, it's, I got some hack from it. Um, and I'll be honest with you, after, um, <laughs> after I've researched and, and I've been talking to people and people have been commenting, I was I was fairly accurate in, in my in my in my uh, depiction of that video. Um, I might have been off by just a little bit here and there, um, but I do like it just because people are commenting below and um, getting out some more information. Um, but it really just depends. To answer your question, what film should you use? You should use the film that you think is best for you. Most manufacturers or most producers of film. Um, they'll be able to go ahead and send you sample rolls. So call them direct or write the I know email them. Just call them. Um, and then just ask them for a sample roll. Now, if the, if the quality looks good, if it shrinks well, if the prices were just right, um, and if they're offering some sort of warranty, whether it be over film or labor, um, then, um, and if you think it's beneficial for you, then that's the one you want to go with. I mean, everyone wants to start with the best and everyone wants to drive a Ferrari, but not everyone can afford a Ferrari, especially when you're just learning. So like that top-notch, top-tier films like Lumar, 3M, um, Matico and all, all these, I mean, all the other great films as well. Like, it may not be within your reach um, to start off with that film just because it's, you know, for a roll of film, you're talking three, four, five hundred dollars of a roll. That's a lot of money to invest, especially when you're just getting started. So, my tip to you research some film manufacturers, get some sample rolls, see what feels good to you um, that you like working with, and, um, and see if the price is right. And if, and if all those mesh, then I think you got a film that you can work with. Which uh, E to the lock. Uh, what's your favorite tool, squeegee for final cleaning before install? Okay, so the tools that I use before I do my installs, maybe for like a back window, um, I use a this, the handled scrubber with the, just a white scrub pad, um, and then at the end I will either use a stroke doctor or a side swipe. Um, to squeegee it just because it has a lot of coverage. I was using just like you know, like a four or five inch regular squeegee like a yellow turbo or something like that um, but uh, with the handle with the side swipe or the uh, stroke docker it, I felt like it had a little bit more reach and a little bit more, a little bit easier to clean plus it's wider blades so I was able to clean a lot faster. Um, so those are the ones that I like to use. Oh Ralph commented I didn't see that.
Let's see here. Alright, alright, alright. Well, hopefully some people are in here. Hopefully Ralph's in here. Ralph, if you're in here, hey, hey, what's up? Uh, let's see here. I really appreciate it for the motivation. What website can you use to search for commercial retail shops? Um, well, thank you for the motivation. I'm glad I'm able to motivate Mohammed. Mohammed, yeah, Mohammed, I've seen you. Uh, I'm definitely commenting and, and uh, doing other things. Very active in the uh, community. Appreciate that. Um, so I'm glad I motivate you here. What website can I use to search for commercial retail shops? Um, are you looking for a place to set up shop? I think that might be the question that you're asking me. Um, I'll be very honest with you. I don't know. I've never set up a shop before. Um, I've been very lucky in my career to be able to set myself up with, um, with shops that uh, take care of me very well, I guess you could say. Um, eventually, I'll get to a point where I want to make more money and a shop cannot provide me that type of money that I want. And then at that point, I'll, ju I'll probably jump into a shop. Um, but I have other, 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 other little uh, projects, side projects as well that really uh, get me going also that I think that I want to build it on. Um, like I do uh, group training. So, um, you know, for groups with like maybe car dealerships that are looking to start in-house tinting or maybe a shop that has... Um, you know, they do wraps and they do PPF, but they don't have window film yet. Um, I do things like that. I do consulting as well. So it really just depends on my, uh, on my position on whether or not I'm going to get a shop and if it's beneficial for me, how much time it's going to take up. Um, but that's why I don't have a shop right now. Um, so my, my, uh, Ooh, Hey Ralph. Hey, Hey Ralph. Nice to join you. Thanks for joining. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to learn something, looking for the nuggets. Guys, if you guys don't know Ralph, this is Ralph Van Pelt. Um, he's another YouTube tenor. Um, he just joined and commented on there. Um, if you guys don't know it, um, go ahead and check out Ralph Van Pelt on YouTube. His, uh, he's got about, I don't know, he's got about like 100 or something videos. Um, he just broke the 10,000 mark on subscribers. So make sure to go ahead and check him out. He's awesome. He's got um, health uh, help videos and tutorials and different things like that. Um, so he's definitely beneficial. If you guys like my stuff, you'll definitely like his stuff as well. So thanks for joining, Ralph. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see here. It's going off on just a couple more questions. What slip solution do I prefer? Um, I use mainly water and Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo. I know you can use Equate or you can use the Dollar General or the, or the Family Dollar cheapo stuff. Um, I'm just kind of like a tint snob. I like using bounce sheets and I like using Johnson's baby shampoo. Um, it's just, uh, just how I am. You know, uh, maybe if I'm running, if I'm running my own shop and I have a half dozen guys and we're going through a case of shampoo, maybe at that point I'll decide to switch, uh, to something else, but just mainly that I do a, I use a junior pump, uh, too. So I believe that the max out is like 32 or 35 ounces. I forget what it is. But uh, I just do a, a, a like a three count with uh, with like 38 ounces, I believe. Pretty big bottle. Um, but I do have a video. Check out my video on the perfect slip solution because everyone is just a little bit different. Some people like to use it a little bit wet. Some people like it a little bit more dry so it doesn't move around a lot. So um, my slip solution may not be perfect for you. But definitely check out the video that I do have available for you. Um, just go through my, my videos and you'll see it. The perfect slip solution. Um, and it's going to help uh, get to exactly where you want to be. All right. Uh, John, John McBride, appreciate it. Thanks. I'm glad we're able to help. Glad we're able to help. Let's see here. Okay, Josh asks, where are you located and how much do you charge for training? Um, I've been thinking about learning how to tint. Um, so to answer your question, I'm, I currently live in the Tampa, Florida area. I was in Alabama before that and before that I was in Northern Kentucky. So I was all over the area, but I'm now in Florida. Um, so uh, uh, I'm now in Florida, so this is where I'm going to reside. I don't know if I'm going to be in the Tampa area forever. I don't know, um, but I definitely love the Florida area. 
Training on tent, uh, tent training is, for solo work, it's a little bit difficult for me to work one-on-one -on -one with people uh, because, uh, because my target audience are obviously brand new tenters or tenters that are within, just breaking into the industry. Um, so they're out of state. So if I go one-on-one -on -one with you, it's kind of like, you know, there's flights, there's hotels, rental cars, plus the time for the training. It, it, it comes a little overbearing. Um, so one-on-one -on -one typically isn't beneficial for you. Um, it would probably run you about four to $5,000 out of pocket. So that's not going to be helpful for you, of course. So um, what you can do is that I have partnered um, with the guys over at, uh, at Window Tent School, uh, John and the guys over at Window Tent School um, up in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, if, if I have solo people or people that are reaching out to me that want to do solo work or solo training, um, they do really, really great on it. Um, they are an affiliate to the, to the channel, so that does help out the channel as well if you end up doing some work with them and going getting trained over there. But check it out, Window Tint School um, in Jacksonville, Florida. You can go ahead and check it out. They're really awesome. They got a, a dedicated building just for training. Um, they do, I mean, professional training, and their website's awesome. Um, and they, these guys just do it right. So I would definitely refer you guys to them if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training. If you guys wanted to do training with me, you could totally can, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be costly. Uh, mainly uh, group training is where I do the bulk of my training just because it's more cost-effective for a business uh, to send me to five people versus sending five people to a training facility. So I hope that answers your question. Just checking out and reading some of these uh, chats here. Sonora, Mexico. Hey, hey, guys. Hey. Uh, Playa on a budget. Thank you and Ralph for taking the time to educate us. I learned so much from watching both of you all. Y'all, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and the demographics on this channel is pretty astonishing. I'll be honest with you. I thought I'd be able to get just a lot of people within the States, um, but we have people from all over Malaysia, the UK, um, and all over the place. So um, if you're watching from, uh, from somewhere else outside the States, thank you for taking the time to watch us. And we're looks like we're rolling up about 27 minutes. So I think I want to maybe take one more question or so if you're still in on this. Um, let's see. Muhammad asks, what light do you use when cutting the back window film? Um, if I don't, if I'm plot hand cutting, then I don't use a light because it's, uh, I mean, if I use a plotter, then I don't use a light because it's already cut. But um, believe it or not, these lights that I'm actually using uh, to light me in the video are the lights that I use when I hand cut and tint, uh, when I did back in the day, I didn't need, I don't need them anymore. Um, but let me see if I can get one down here for you. This is... I'm oh, sorry. I'll try to turn that off there for you. Okay. This is an LED light I picked up from Home Depot. It was about $40. Um, I went with LEDs. It's a little bit more expensive than the, uh, than the two bulbs, but they last a lot longer. They have a little bit of a diffuser here, and they don't get as hot. Um, but I literally just take this and shove it in the back. This one, I believe, is a 48-inch. It's a little big for my taste. It's a little bit big for some back windows. Um, if you could, I'd get a little bit smaller just so you have something big enough to, to put in the back there. I'm still here, sorry. All right, all right. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. We are reaching the 30-minute mark. I don't want to take up too much time. Um, thank you for joining. If you have joined us um, today, I hope this was beneficial. If you did like this, make sure to give it a good thumbs up and share with your friends if, uh, if you know anyone that might benefit from this video. Um, also, lastly, for people that are either here or watching the, the rebroadcast, I, like I said, I'm going to be doing this every Sunday um, afternoon, so after 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, just to get people enough time to get back from like church and whatnot. Um, but I'd really love to know what you guys want, what kind of topics you guys want to cover. Uh, make sure to comment below. If you're watching live right now, unfortunately, the live chat does disappear after um, we wrap up. So just make sure to come back when the video goes back up and just comment below about some topic items that you guys want to go over and I'll go over them and research them and, and get them ready for next week. All right. So thanks again, guys. Um, if you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe 
and we will talk to you soon. You're welcome, Robert.